um, try to apply organoid technology for tissue engineering, which is uh, to engineer a, an intestinal graft in the dish from scratch and to build an intestine and transplant back to the patient. So you want to build intestines yes, that in was the lab the plan. and then transplant to That's patients. That's the plan. Wow. So basically there are patients with intestinal failure, which is a condition when the body cannot absorb enough fluids and nutrients. So then the patient needs transplantation, uh, organ transplantation, but there are problems for uh, just normal organ transplantation. Well, first of all, there is a shortage of organ, there is not enough yes. um, donors, donors. Uh, but also very often you have so-called graft host rejection problems that your body is rejecting the tissue, so mm. that's one of the key issues. So our aim is to obtain patient-derived cells, for example, to get biopsy from a patient, and we can grow organoids and different cell types from the tissue, and then put them together in the dish to form a tissue intestine and transplant back to the patient. Oh, wow. So because you're taking your own stem cell and yes. growing them in, into then you the organ, avoid. then your body won't reject it. Exactly, that's the, the goal. And how long does it take, you know, you're just starting, I guess, to try to develop this? Mm -hmm. Or even if you find something in your work on stem cells, mm -hmm. Um, how long would it take to you know, actually have a clinical application and you know, we use it to treat people? It uh, depends on what application. Uh, for example, you can grow organoids from tumor tissue, which you can actually use it, uh, expand in a dish and do drug screening, where you can uh, screen a panel of drug to see which one is more effective for oh, wow. that patient. So this application, I think uh, people are doing it already, uh, probably not really in the clinic, but it's proven to be possible. So I think uh, in this case, it's fairly soon going to the clinic. Uh, but if you're talking about applying organoid, for example, on the tissue engineering to build a gut and transplant back to the patient, that's probably a more complicated project. We have a plan to um, engineer this construct and transplant to large animal by 2020. So if everything goes right, then uh, <laughs> we plan to apply first in patient um, clinical trial in 2021. So yeah, that's relatively ambitious, but as a scientist, you need to be ambitious to of bring your research to the clinic. And this is a perfect place to do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
uh, gut unit normally present in our lumen, in our gut lumen. So they are where the stem cell locates. So in, a, in our lumen, you have a surface a layer of cells, mm -hmm. which is for food digestion and absorption. That's the main purpose of the gut. And uh, these cells are constantly renewed all the time because of the food processing. Um, and they are supported by the stem cells located at the bottom with some unit called crypt and that exactly is look like this. So the here. stem cells are the cells dividing constantly to uh, replenish, to replenish yeah, the all cells the cell that you're... during the food yeah. processing. Okay. Yes. So these are the stem cells located here. Okay. And you can see uh, you have many many more units in one organoid. Like this is another crypt, that's one crypt and this is another one. Okay. So you have many many more crypts here. And basically, if you cut through the organoid, it's um, empty inside. It's like a lumen in the gut. Like so the very intestine. similar. Like the gut. Yes, exactly. So all cell types are present in these organoids. So it really is like a mini gut. It is like mini guts. So they are very good for uh, studying the tissue development. So what made you want to work with stem cells and cancer development? Um, so I, I think I always wanted to uh, develop something that can improve or treat uh, human diseases. Uh, so we know a lot of information and we know there are like 20,000 genes present in our body. But still very little is known about how this works. Mm. So I was quite excited mm -hmm. and I thought there will be a lot of things we can do about that. And I find it quite interesting and inspiring. And I thought if you understand more the genetic cause and you will probably uh, find more uh, improved uh, drug target for that as well. So I was quite interested in that direction. And you have two small children? I do. I have uh, a two and a half year old and a six months old, so she's still quite young. <laughs> and you're already back in the lab. Yeah. So yeah. How, how do you cope with you know, such a demanding life, which is the life of a researcher? and uh, the family life? I mean, for me, I always wanted to have a family, so there's no doubt I will have a family. Um, my job is very uh, demanding, very challenging, and you just have to adjust your work arrangement. For example, I work um, um, in the train for the commute as well, home, I, I keep working, and then during my maternity leave, I was working as well, and uh, if I'm really me, trying to meet some deadline for the project. I have to work also after putting kids to bed and just uh, work a little bit more. Uh, but I like my job, so that's not really it's a problem. Okay. Yes. And I think in a way, also I have a, a young daughter who's the six month old one, and I always wanted to be her role model as mm -hmm. well one day when she grows up. So I just want to do whatever I can and of course. just uh, show her that women can also work very hard as they want. Of course. And I know you've also been involved in supporting other women. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, because I'm coming from Hong Kong and then I move all the way to the Netherlands. I've experienced, of course, all different type of um, experience and difficulties challenges. as well, challenges. So I always want to share my own experience as well. Uh, there is a Gender Matters in Science Committee here, which was formerly called uh, Women in Science Committee. And they are trying to encourage uh, women or actually different gender to have a gender balance and everyone can do whatever they want. So I was part of the committee with other people as well and we're trying to do a lot of activities like uh, networking lunch or workshops to share our experience and um, to talk with junior researchers, mainly like students, postdocs, and to let them know what support they can have if they want to continue their science as a woman. So yeah, there, there are quite a lot of support here. And on that positive note, thank you so much, Vivian, for talking about your thank research you. and your experience as a woman in science.